Well, hello everyone. This is Jake Forsyth, your host with Pints with Air, and I've got the Airhead in Chief, Ariel Brown here, and uh, our good, good friend, a special guest today, Mr. Ron Sutherland of Sutherland Engineering. He uh, he was our part, one of our partners at our recent uh, Axbona show, and we just had such a great time with Ron that I had to invite him on and just kind of help kind of get sh showcase what uh, Southern Sutherland engineering is all about and uh, help people get to know who who you are Ron and uh, and kind of know more about your operation and what you do and uh, yeah you were just such a great guy to work with that uh, I just I had to have you on had to have you well glad to be here thanks for inviting me yeah right on well I'm glad to have you and you're rocking your air shirt I'm I am honored. Yeah, I, I, I was given this on the way out of the show. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm wearing it. And it's, it's, it's a one for sure. Glad, oh, glad to have it. Thank you. You're the best. Well, so, yeah, Ariel and I, we, uh, we like to kind of showcase a lot of our local breweries around here. And uh, I, we, we, uh, we kind of balance each other out in a sense where Ariel's not the biggest fan of IPAs and I'm not the biggest fan of lagers, but I found an IPA that Ariel likes. Oh, okay. I did. Yeah. So we got the Crooked Stav. Did I say that right? I say that crooked right? Stave. Crooked crooked Stave. Uh, yeah. Juicy West is our, <laughs> is our drink today. So it's in, it's an IPA with, uh, Double dry hopped with Idaho Seven Mosaic and Eldorado hops. Man, gosh, oh, man. it's good. I'm not picky. I'll drink any IPA, really. Well, that's 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 because it's like audiophile kind of lingo, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. Quite a bit, yeah. There yeah, all the specs. And... What, what do you like about the Juicy West, Ariel? Well, it. You know, like you know what, what I don't like about a lot of IPAs, some of but just just how. Uh, just how bitter and how you know dank some of them are but this one is actually really light it doesn't have that crazy bite that crazy bitterness and it is really that kind of like they call it juicy and that's really that's you know it's <laughs> almost almost a hint of like orange juice in a way I mean it's not nearly that strong but it's 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 a bit like that and so um yeah this is this is nice and smooth um doesn't have that have that crazy bitterness that that kind of drives me away. I can usually have about half of one, and then it's, and then it starts to get to me. But this one, I can drink a lot of these. Yeah, I liked your I liked your adjective there with, for IPAs. They are usually pretty dank. <laughs> they have definitely tended that way. That seems to be the popular trend, at least. Yeah. Well, Ron had, uh, he shared a little bit of it before we jumped in here of what he's drinking, but uh, what, what are you drinking again, Ron? What do you have today? Oh, uh, you left it. You forgot it. I lost it. I was scooting around the camera trying to get my harp in there and with, with, with uh, not, not much luck. So I've got, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give up good. on that. <laughs> All right. Here I am. I'm drinking some uh, oatmeal stout, and it's it's a Free State Brewery. It's a small brewery in uh, Lawrence, Kansas, and awesome. it used to be an old, used to be an old bus stop. And I remember taking buses there when I was a college kid. So when I wasn't hitchhiking, so and so now just a you know just a, a small deal. And uh, I like oatmeal stout. I just like kind of you know thick hearty kind of stuff. You know. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're and then, and go ahead, then, Ron. Then, I, then I'm no, I'm no stranger to drinking PBR either. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> we, uh, yeah, we uh, we we've been a fan of Boulevard Brewing, I know, and I'm all, oh yeah, I'm trying to remember if we have one in our discography of our episodes here. I know, um, we had a listener actually um, send us send us uh, like a barrel aged quad or something. It was amazing and really strong. Um, and I know Brent was also, you know, Brent's from 
uh, he went to school in Kansas, yeah. grew up in Kansas. Yeah. And so he, um, yeah. he, um, he introduced us to the Boulevard Brewing. I think that Tank 7 was one of our favorites. Oh, that has grown so much over the years. I mean, it was yeah. just a little home of all. And now it's just occupies blocks and blocks and <laughs> event things. I go to a lot of parties there, this, that, and the other. And I've had the tour. And awesome. It, it's, I, I, I love seeing production machinery. Just yeah. to see, just to see the automation things flying through, I, I really get a kick out of that. Yeah, same here. That's fun stuff. I yeah. watch a lot of YouTube's along those lines too about production kind of things. I get a kick out <laughs> of things flying through the factories. Yeah. That makes me well. Now you've you've got me thinking about some some things that I've been curious about with uh, with what you guys do out at Sutherland. So you've been in Missouri the whole time. Has have you always been out there? Oh, well, let me see. I used to live in Lawrence. That was my college town. I was there for about thirty years. And then finally, uh, you know, I tried being an adult, and I, I moved to Kansas City. And I've been here for maybe uh, twenty years or so. 15, 20 years. Yep. And um, I, I found myself like when I was in Lawrence driving to Kansas City a lot, and I think, well, I may as well just live there. So, and you've been building phonos, I, I read, for what, close to 40 years, or is it over 40? Or? It, it could be. Back, at, back a little history is that when I first started, um, I was making real expensive stuff. For, for Japan, Taiwan, Hong Kong, th th that market. And um, and that's how I started. And um, and then I added a phono preamp to that like later on. But, um, I'm so glad, I mean, it's very expensive stuff, real thick machine aluminum, all the, all the fussiness of, of finishing and the difficulties of that and one little scratch and you're scrapping stuff and it was it was just it was a nightmare i hated doing it yeah. and yet i didn't um i wanted to be a highfalutin audio manufacturer and so i felt that i had to do what the other fancy manufacturers were doing and when you when you're doing that then you're you're trying you, you, all, you all you can do is catch up you know maybe right are you always behind if you're trying to outdo what they're already doing well? Mm. It, it, it was kind of uh, not much fun. And, um, and, and then other manufacturers have a tremendous influence on your design decisions because you see them as you need to outdo them. But, but to, to outdo somebody at their own game, that sucks. You know, that's the advantage of, of being at it for a while and getting older too. So. So I, so I, anymore, I don't really think in terms of competition. I think in terms of designing to my, to the principles that, that I think are most efficacious and sticking with that and making that a discipline. And then, and using those, those kinds of approaches to uh, oh, uh, do the best job I can. And then, and then explain to people why I do that and how I do it and such. And if, they, if they're like-minded, then they will want my stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that really kind of um, uh, that, that really strikes a core with me is because they, like when I first started at AIR, when I was like, I was, you know, really still in college. And I, so, I, so I started, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, underneath Charlie's tutelage basically. So like yeah. I was, you know, you know, you know, you know, um, um, I was, you know, really interested. I, I, I was, I, I was very new to the industry. So I was always looking at what other people were doing. Yeah. What other cool stuff they were doing. And I would like have all the ideas, all, all, all these ideas and bring them to Charlie's like, well, no, no, like that, that's, an, you don't want to do that because of this and this and that. And so like, it's a really big kind of temper, like, yeah, you don't you don't want to follow what other people are doing, and so really did kind of learn yeah. that. Yeah, no, it just. Yeah. And so now, you know, twenty five years later. Yeah. Yeah, I pay very little attention to what other companies are doing. Probably, I should probably pay a little more 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 attention, but really, um, 
I know what our strengths are. I know what we're capable of. Yeah. And just do that the best we can and make, and make our customers happy. Um, I don't know that it's worth trying to do any more than that. Um, yeah, it, it, I think it's really valuable to not let, not let the industry as a whole overly influence your design decision. And, and, and I think we're kind of outliers with values of that sort. Because I, I see people are always, they're generally competing on price or features. Yeah. Or, yeah. you know, or glitziness or any of that stuff. And so then that just gets to be one upsmanship. Whatever you do, somebody else can do it more. And you're, you're uh, competing um, on somebody else's terms instead of your own. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, so with you, be, Ron, with you being a phono only kind of focus there and, and then that really being kind of your strength, does that, does that mean you've always kind of been a vinyl head have, have you long been a like when, when did you first get into vinyl oh um just that's just what i grew up with of course yeah. and then um and then um back in my mark mogan days and so you know we were, we were doing vinyl and all that and then cds came in and i remember oh yeah cd is shoot man so i sold my turntable packed up my records and boom bought bought a whole bunch of cds i mean i was done I was into the new technology. I was just, yeah, so, so it wasn't loyal to vinyl. And then later on, um, I, came, I came around, you know, I got me got a nice, nice table, this, that, and the other, and started enjoying it again. Did save my records. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean, the, mar every, the market and everybody was telling me, you know, hey, CDs are perfect. And I believed it. I just did. So, so I, I, you know, I, not, nothing to brag about there on my, my <laughs> so, but, but, but I had a nice Revox CD player and da, 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 I was kind of proud of it. So. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you meant, you mentioned uh, you like CNC automated machines and stuff. I think that stuff is so cool too, but how do, oh, you, Lord. How, how do you guys build? Like how, how, how many people so that, are at Sutherland and what, what's kind of the general build process for you guys? Well, that's, that's really one of the big advantages in being a small manufacturer these days is I can get prototypes, I can get small production runs, and there's no setup expenses to mount to anything. And so, I mean, it wasn't all, back in the old days, it was, um, it was, it was hard tooling, man, and it was expensive, and you couldn't make any changes, and boy, you better be ready to make some money because you're going to have a lot, a lot of money to pay back. And so um, I'm really grateful that we have a we have a sheet metal fabricator in St. Louis, mm -hmm. and they do all the you know just laser cutting of course, and they, they laser cut it and bend it up, powder coat it, and silk screen it and send it to us. And then we use Neo Fay in California, as so many people do, and they do beautiful panels for us. And so so both of those things are, are sourced here domestically, and um, they're just kind of tried and true folks. I mean, we could we could maybe shop them, but on the other hand, uh, that might open up more problems. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's that's never an easy path. I mean, if you have somebody that worked with a long time, um, yeah. and and it's proven, trying to recreate that is it, it's tempting sometimes. Yeah, when we the price is going up. Shoot, man. It's, yeah. Yeah, but but um, I'm I'm I, I I tend to be quite loyal to people, you know, when I have a relationship with them, and um, I kind of uh, and I want them to be good to me too. I want them to give me um, uh, a good product, and I'll stick with them. So it kind of works. Yeah, how and how many people are on your team? The team. Okay, that's right. Uh, it's. Um, I, this three minute team, is there some minimal number? <laughs> More than one. Okay, it's me and Chad DeFever and his daughter, Abby. Awesome. And the three of us do the whole shebang. Wow. I, I have an office in Kansas City. I thought my phone was gonna be able to give you a tour, but I, I 
get screwed up on that. But um, yeah, I, I got an office here in Kansas City and I do design work, do a lot of it on CAD and I do the prototyping. And then Chad and Abby are in, um, in Lawrence and um, I knew Chad's parents for a long time and I knew him when he was young and, and he, he worked for me seven years ago. And so I just know him very well. And so it's, it's just nice to have somebody I completely trust and I have complete confidence in their, um, their honesty, their integrity, their craftsmanship. Just, I just do. So that, that's wonderful. Not yeah. to have to. And then, um, and he just keeps taking on more and more stuff. Like he, he, he orders the parts. He does the parts inventory. Um, he, he, they, they do the as assembly work, uh, the, the, uh, Packaging, the testing, uh, in, finish good inventory, um, and take it to FedEx. Hmm. So kind of, you know. Every I, hat. Every hat. I, yeah. So believe me, that gave me a good quality of life. Yeah. Because those are all things I don't really do very well, or I get behind up, or I make excuses and don't get done. So. Yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely a little jealous of, jealous of that right now because I'm a bit, oh. too, <laughs> a bit too involved in the production side right now. But well, I count my blessings that uh, I, I, I really do because uh, my quality of life would be uh, I got it pretty good right now. Sure do, and I, I do appreciate them. And and then and then my contribution to that is that I try to make things easy to build and simple to build so that yep. I can hand them something that's reproducible without frustration, without hassles and yep. put it together, it's gonna work. Yep. They ship it, then come back. And so those efficiencies are, are also add to our quality of life too. Hmm. Yep. And, and, the, and, and, and if I can't make this thing easy to build, I haven't, I, I don't consider that good engineering. Right, exactly right. And back in the old days, I was so I was so busy trying to show off and be you know extra fancy. Ah, awful path to take. Awful. Yeah. Because the stuff was essentially just a nightmare to build. A nightmare. Yep. The complexity and, and and all that. It was just like, well, I'm telling you. I I, I learned a thing about that. <laughs> Better to keep it simple, huh? Yeah. Oh my gosh. All those advantages, and and you know, and 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 I think you guys, as you, as you know, I, I I talk about simplicity, but you can also take off the lid, and you will see it. So it's 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 the words and the visual affirmation of it. So the story hangs together tight because it's true. All right. Well, I know you didn't want to talk too much <clears throat> about product, but I have some cool pictures. So maybe you can take us through some of them. So like we had. Oh, a, no. Well, this is this is like, OK. Just real quick, because we had this this new phono, I think. This, this oh, yeah. is a new product for you, right? The, yeah, the TZ Direct. Uh-huh. Yeah. Is this. Oh, oh you really <laughs> dug into it. OK. Yeah. Yeah. I just I, I like your layout. I think that like the way that you kind of separate either power supply or channels um just it, yeah it's really it's really unique i don't know of too many other i can't think of too many other designs like this i i i, th I think that people would see my boards and they would see my they saw sutherland did that you know i i, I think it's yep. it's uh, i mean and, and they're, they're they're plenty nice looking boards i mean there are nice boards in the industry but mine are kind of have a different kind of um, expression of, you know, it's like an expression of how I do things. Yeah. Yep. And I just, I love fussing around board layouts. I just dig it. And I just, mm -hmm. um, I just have everything was snap precisely under the grids. And, um, and, and I'm, there's very short of signal pass. And I've been doing this so long that, that there's, um, the orderliness is a, is also the shortest signal path. I mean, I do it all together, you know? The layout is real, it's just the schematic. I just lay it out like the schematic and there's no, um, there's no, um, 
uh, artistic fussing around. I mean, it, it's orderly, you know, that, that is the art, is the order of it. Yep. And I don't have meandering circuits. I like, uh, you know, when I have loading and gain adjustments, they're right there on the circuit board in the signal path, boom, right there. So I don't try to pull them into the back panel or the bottom panel or the front panel. So that's another signature thing that I, uh, I I stick to. So I design with discipline, and I think I think that really I think good design requires discipline. Without discipline, you're all over the place, and discipline really gives you a a focused uh, continuity of, to things. You, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because without discipline, you just you just don't. I mean, you, you can get distracted in, in so many, pull so many directions. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, you can be susceptible to feature creep. You can be, yeah, you oh. can look at, you're good, you can, yeah, like um, um, kind of those conveniences, I'd consider them like kind of you're talking about as far as where you place a switch, switchable element like a kick the gain yeah. or the loading. You know, there, there is a there is a convenient place to put that, which is on the, the back or the front. But that's not necessarily where, you know, like yeah. how, how the circuit is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly right. And 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 here's here's the thing, Ariel. Um, and what's convenient about the back panel? Like nothing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, get, <laughs> you, get, you, you get that back panel on the shelf, and yeah. it, there is no convenience except you yeah. can't see it and you can't read it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so I, I just, I just, I just straight up, I said, yeah, they're inside. There is an inconvenience to it, but, yeah. but the other That's places, are in, the in, other places are inconvenient also. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and the nice thing about, oh, like the trans impedance gain stages, I'm doing, they, they don't have any loading adjustments. And so there's, there pr- probably people aren't have, don't have to get in there anyway. So. And, and another thing uh, I like is my designs, they really don't generate much heat. So you can leave them on 24 seven, always warmed up and good to go. And plus I don't even need any ventilation in the top covers. Right. And so, but with a solid top cover, my insides are gonna see brand spanking new for decades. And I, I just, I just kind of like the idea that you yeah. take the cover off and it looks new. Yeah, yeah. So we've had plenty of, you know, power amps that that a generate heat and b require oh, yeah. venting and we get them back for service and yeah they are they can be uh very interesting inside especially if they have pets or anything else they can be oh my gosh yes yeah mess. yeah and and, and uh, yeah and and then the heat dissipation is going you know, the, it, it, they can't cool very well if they got dust all over them mm-hmm. right yeah, yeah, and and oh, and and um, so I let's uh, so oh, so thanks for bringing up that picture again. Uh, if we look at the audio boards, I I I, I think that 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 I'm no stranger to uh, talking about dual mono uh, on my preamps, where each channel has the same thing, da da da, and. Um, I say so that each signal has the same circuit, the same layout, the same physical trajectory. Mm-hmm. And so that way, what happens to one channel is going to happen to the other precisely. Like not, they're not like kind of mono. They they truly are. And they're two power cords and the two boards. And um so, that, that discipline. Yeah, it's and I, and I'm and here's what I like to combine with discipline is laziness. <laughs> okay. It's easier for me to lay out a mono board than a stereo board. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, mono boards are just easy. So I, so I, so I, so I lay it out once and build it twice. Right. So, so I, I think good engineering is also, uh, it's fun to express uh, those kind of values. Now, yeah. yeah. Now here, but but if we look at that picture again, I just said that I use identical boards in the left and right channel. 
And that one's mirrored, yeah. Looks like it, doesn't it? It looks yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. They are the same board. Okay. They are exactly the same board. Now, here's from if if I'd have mirrored them, then the circuit layout would not be the same. And I, and I, I can't say that I'm using the same circuit board if I mirrored. It's not the same. And I like to to be precise about. You know, if I say it's the same, it's the same. Well, you can look at it and say. Uh, you might think I'm, well, you know, then here's the deal. And I figured this out in the 2020. Those are the same boards. I just put the parts on different sides. That's, that's what I was wondering. Board. Yeah, that's what I was wondering, yeah. <laughs> it took me forever to forget to do that. Yeah. And yet it's so, and then the light came on and said, oh man, I really celebrated that. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, what, you, yeah, what you can do if you're not using XLRs, if it's just an RCA um, as far as a connector and pretty much everything else is. Um, Most are two leaded components. Yeah, yeah. But, but um, you know, with the three three leaded ICs, I got to kind of move, 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 the move, uh, you know, put it on the other side. Or yeah. There's an IC in there, I got to put it on the other side of the board. Right. But th that other than that, and that changed the graphics. So one board says right, and one board, the other side says left. Right. So the graphics look left and right. Yeah. But it's the same, same board, board yeah. for the bin. And yeah, that's I, great. Those are the kind of things that just, just yeah. I, I get all pumped up about. It make yeah. me feel. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I, we definitely have some, some, uh, some very similar design fields. I know like even, even when I'm doing Sterile, but even when I'm doing a, 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 a balanced circuit, and so I've got the yeah. two phases, two phases yeah. of one channel. Yeah, I go to great lengths to make sure that they are um, of very equal length or mirrored. And so even if that makes a couple traces a little ugly, um, um, I make sure that they are equal lengths. Um, oh, okay. I make sure that things are very, very equal phase to phase. Um, yeah, to make sure that everything, you know, again, that just as kind of one of those, one of those design principles, one of those design constraints that you know I, I really adhere to. Um, yeah, it's, it's yeah. similar by the way. Yeah, I mean, I've always, uh, I always love seeing the top off and your gear so beautiful inside and all that, the same meticulous attention to detail. I mean, there, there are going to be, there's going to be a part of the population that sees it and appreciates it. And, yeah. and the, pe the people that don't see it and don't appreciate it, well, they get it anyway. So, yeah. Yeah. and we have, we have the satisfaction of doing it nicely like that. Yeah, yeah. And the people that do get it, they, they are our biggest fans. Right, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was a, a kind of a funny story. We, we you, know, you know, we have collaborated with one or two other companies before. And so we, we helped a friend of ours with a design. Mm -hmm. um, and so we um, we actually shared a distributor at the time and oh. um, they opened one of one of this other company's products and they looked at the board and said, oh, Air designed that. It's obvious that Air designed that. Just, <laughs> just, by, just exactly. by the, just by the, yeah. just by the layout, just by the style. Yeah, it your signature, that we your designed signature. it. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Well, and Ron, you make it pretty easy to identify you know, if, if if somebody's paying homage to your circuit designs too. I mean, that's it's a very distinct look there. So it is. Yes, it, it is. And um, very cool. But yet, I would, I wouldn't know how to do it any differently. Yeah. I mean, it's not like. <laughs> that's just how I do it. Yeah. Well, it's and so even our least expensive products, I lavish all kinds of attention on them because I figure even it's even more important for that because yeah, more people have it, you know. And and I want them. Our phone prints start like nine hundred dollars, and 
that's a lot of money. No joke, 900 bucks. And I respect that they trust me to do a good job for them. And I will. And I want them to be proud of it too. I want people that buy any of my price points to be proud of it. Yep, that's fantastic. Yeah. So it looks, from what I've been able to gather, it looks like you've mostly done solid state stuff. Have you done any two phone Oh, gosh. Or anything, or is that yep. That was one of the things I wanted to I've got a few chassis kind of strung around here, and I was going to show you a picture. I got a, I got a little tube thing going out here. No, I mean I, you know, because I do I do tinker with things, and um, it, it, it's a, a trans impedance input stage, and then some tubes in the output. Uh, oh, for 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 the moving magnet on forward, but um, oh, it's been a lot of trouble. I'm getting kind of tired of messing with it, and I, and I, yeah. I think I don't. I think I don't, I think I'd be opening up a whole kettle of problems. So I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, you know, I mean, I've kind, of, I've kind of enjoyed messing with it, sure. but I don't think I want all the um, hassles of uh, the uncertainties. That's the nice thing about solid state. Certainly. You get that thing all kind of locked in and it's yep. reproducible and yep. it's going to stay that way. Yep. And, um, pretty much done with it yep yeah yeah the time it takes for those solid state components to start to degrade so much longer i think you'll you'll just get that yeah you get that consistent sound for so much longer but exactly and that, that that's why i i my, my stuff ends up in front of tube electronics all the time because you know, so that, at least that's one area you know um uh, you, you're locked in and then you have other areas that you could do your tube rolling messing around with too. Mm -hmm. So you do a lot of the design work and it sounds like Chad's been taken on more and more and more for you. So is, oh, yeah. is, is he going to, is there going to be a phono stage that we can expect to be designed by Chad one day soon, maybe? Um, Let's see here. That, and, 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 and you can see I'm struggling with that question. And, and let me tell you what's behind that question is um, it is, um, I've had a lot of birthdays behind me. And so it's very appropriate for me to think about a succession plan. And, um, and so we're, uh, And, and, and he seems a natural path for that. And, and, and for all he's done for me, um, I'm, I'm very grateful. And I would like for him to be able to continue with it. And um, he's learning electronics. And uh, he's, he's, he's very creative and very good at problem solving. And I think that... Um, He's going to be uh, a very competent in taking over the company someday. Yeah. Now, whether that will be circuit design or just um, the uh, the uh, the overview or, or or whatever that might be, I I, I can't say. You know, no. I I don't. Um... <sighs> What's well, difficult? It's just it's just difficult, especially you know. When, when one person has been doing it and, and I'm, I would expect that he would do it differently because yeah. he should do it differently eventually, yeah. eventually. you know, and um, well, I don't know. It's hard for me to talk about, you know, how, you know, it, it, it's, it's, um, and that's why I want to introduce him to people in the industry. We go to shows, and he can kind of, um, kind of um, be visible in the industry too. Yep. Yeah. So, so it has. So, so your your very simple question is, um, it, it's just loaded with um, uh, complexities. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, I, 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 I just, I see. Uh... 
I see value in the teaching experience, like having yeah. someone as, as an understudy. Like I, um, yeah. for, for years I had done judo. And one of the things that I found unique in that discipline is that they're, at least in my school, it was very quick to um, pair up newer people with the, with the newest people and have, mm. you know, you, you might have a yellow or an orange belt <clears throat> teaching a white belt and you know yeah. that it, it it just it reinforces kind of the things that uh, you already know if you're reteaching somebody else and kind of building them up and and yeah makes you makes you think a different way and so i i i i, I just i like the uh the aspect of improving yourself by teaching others and yeah. uh, and, and find another way to say it and to and, and it's uh, gratifying when you just need to like come on to them. But see, here, and here's, here's another thing is I don't want to be uh, teaching and educating a competitor. See what I say? <laughs> like, uh, I don't want an apprentice, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, I don't want some, co some college student getting a summer job with me. Right. Nope, you, you, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna show you all my circuitry, all my style, and then you can go out and work for somebody else or start your own company. So that's what I like about Chad, is I'm. I'm not. Uh, I'm not uh, teaching a competitor. I'm. 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 I'm teaching the successor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I. 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 I think. Uh... I think like with uh, Ariel's history with us, like he, he started so young under Charlie, you know, yeah. Charlie's understudy and like picked up a lot of his tricks. And uh, yeah, I, 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 that, that I, I see that as essential to us carrying on kind of the core values of air acoustics. And so yeah. I can see that as being valuable to the Sutherland engineering core values continuing. Well, you know, well a lot of my designs, or I have kind of a kind of like Legos. I got little pieces, and yeah. and and the some piece. Oh, that works nicely. That works nicely, and I can kind of rearrange them and put them together in different orders, and have different products. And and um, he will inherit that, and then he, and then he will have his own way and his own stuff too. I, I then. There are just no guarantees on this kind of stuff about yep. yeah, succession. There, there just aren't. And you know, I, I, um, and sometimes things just, you know, some companies. You, we'll, we'll just see. We'll just see. Anyway, yes. I, I would. I, I'd like for that to work. Hmm. And. Uh, <clears throat> All right, so you showed off a really beautiful harp at the beginning. So you obviously are a musician too, right? You play. Oh, give us a little bit of background on that. So, how long have you been playing, and what got you into harp? Oh, mercy sakes! <laughs> well, I've got all the tough I just, questions. I, I just started a couple of years ago. Oh, okay. And, yeah, and. I've always loved the harp. I just think it's the most beautiful sounding looking instrument. There's never any, I mean, it's just my favorite. Like totally. Mm -hmm. And, um, and you know, like I said, I've had a lot of birthdays. And so you say, oh, I'm too old to learn the harp. Oh, I should have done it a long time ago. I can't even, I can't even read music. I don't have time to be any good at this, you know, I. And you, you, you talk to yourself like that, and man, that sucks, you know. Right. So I said, "Hey, I got now, and I just, I, I'm just gonna do it." And, and so, you know, I'm 74, and so, uh, you know, it's like a couple of years ago, 72. Okay, I'm gonna learn how to read music, and I'm gonna learn to harp. You know, it's a quite a fancy instrument, and I did, and I. I, I, I was looking for a harp and, and then this woman had one and I, she, she's a teacher. And so I went for my first lesson, which is free. And, um, and she had a harp for sale and I uh, got a free lesson and bought a harp. <laughs> I, for my free lesson, I bought the harp and she delivered it to my house. 
a big it's a big pedal harp i mean it's it's you know it's a badass pedal harp and um it, it, and i just love the way it feels I, I like to dance too i like tango dancing and so i and 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 so the harp it feels like a woman in your arms <laughs> Lit, uh, it, she, the heart leans into you and the pressure on your chest and your arm, it's an embrace. Mm. I'm telling you, it's a smoking hot instrument. It's so sensuous and you can feel it vibrate into your, in your body and, and you're caressing it, you know? Shit, man, it is just the bomb. It is the bomb. Oh. I, I get it. I get those feelings, man. That's why I play the yeah. bass. Well, I mean, I it just leans into you. And, and, and so, and I am learning to read music just a little bit. And I, in that we have recitals and I go to recitals and I, and I play my, my pieces of the recitals. I'm the only guy at the recital. And, um, most of the, most of the other <laughs> recital players are like, in grade school <laughs> yeah. because that's my level too yeah. you know which is fine it's the best i could do and i and i i show up with courage as, as they do too so well, i think that's super cool you gravitated to the harp i feel like i've my entire life i feel like i've always seen women on on the harp and i, I haven't seen that many men play it for some reason and yeah. You know, it is, it, I agree with you. I think it is one of the most beautiful instruments oh, ever. Well, and the pedal harp has such mechanical complexity. Hmm. Are you familiar with the pedals and all that business? No. Okay. Well, oh, I wish I had my camera. Uh, there are seven pedals down at the bottom and, you, and your feet are working on the pedals. Each pedal, there's a pedal for each note. Okay. And there are three position pedals. So when you look down the harp, I'm looking at 47 strings. And um, and there are little rotors at the top that can shorten the string. So I can make, say all the C's, I've got a C pedal and I can make that sharp or natural hmm. or flat. So it does all the C's or all the any one notes so those pedals shift the key of all the notes up there. And there are, I think, 1900 um, individual parts in that mechanism. And the <laughs> linkage goes up to the column to that mechanism that shortens and lengthens strings. It's very complicated. And that was figured out in the earlier 1800s. Okay. And then, and there used to be just one action. You could only sharpen it with the pedals and then you could sharpen or flatten. And then that, that's when the composers got all excited. Now, back in those days, the harp was for men because they didn't think women had the strength to play it. Right. <laughs> yep. No idea. That's so and cool. it, it does take, I mean, your arms are up. I mean, you are, you are uh, in a state of readiness, you know, right. so. Gosh, 47 strings, that's. Yeah, yeah. Now, when you're looking down there, I see 47 strings and I'm trying to read music and hit the right <laughs> string. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's you know. Now here, now here and here's, here's the thing, is the strings all, Here's here's how I can here's how you find your way. All the C's are red, mm. and the F's are black. So you, you know you know middle C you know where that is, and you kind of work your way around there from the C's and F's. So that that helps a whole bunch, of course. Yeah. And then the higher fuakis are nylon strings, and then it's gut strings, and then wire strings. My harp was made in 1901. Wow. Like, that's horse and buggy days. Yeah. yeah. I can't believe it. Well over 100 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel like a, you know, a caretaker of it. Jeez. Yeah. And so it's all, 
it's all wood, I would assume. So, I mean, at this point, it's probably aged and any moisture in the wood is left. It's probably like a perfect, if it plays, if it plays well now, I mean, it's probably perfect. Well, here's the thing is it's a tremendous force in those strings. Yeah. And that force is determined to fold up the harp. Yeah. I mean, that's that's what that force is. Hey, hey, baby, we're going to twist you into a... And, and, and so it's unusual for a harp to be this old because usually age is not kind to them, but it's, it's oh, going yeah. out as fine. Yeah. It's because the necks can get torqued. Yeah. And then with all the precision of the, the mechanism, then they, they, they can they can have an end of life right yeah that is a lot of force applied to them oh my gosh i saw this i saw this fun picture of you and a little dog in a red convertible oh yeah so oh, oh. <laughs> she's not too she's not too far away <laughs> That was awesome. yeah, that was a little that was that was a little glamour shot there. I <laughs> oh my I God. I had a fun car. I had a little Porsche box Porsche boxer. Okay. I had the top down. And I, we were just my doggy and I. We just loved to go for rides. I could tell it was a sporty car. I just I had oh, to, yeah. I had they're just the cutest little cars. I loved it. And I I don't have any more. It got to be pretty expensive, but it was there until until it hit a hundred thousand miles. It was it was it was just. It was, it was, it was, it was good. It was a good car. Oh, that's awesome. And what's the pup's name? Dolce. Dolce. Sweet. Yes, sweet. That's He's awesome. a sweet little dog. I, I took her to a trade show one year and that was pretty fun. That's awesome. Yeah, you just made my day pulling that dog out of your back pocket. <laughs> that was really cool. <laughs> oh, I'm just sitting on a chair. Oh, let me think here. I don't have it. I, I've got a I've got a sports bag with a webbed uh, uh, mesh side panels. I throw her in there. I can get her into restaurants and everything. And and she she goes she goes to restaurants with me. She goes to the dentist with me. They put the lead shield on me when I'm over her when they're X-raying me. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm a Buddhist. I go to the Buddhist temple. She goes to church with me to the temple and um, all kinds of places, everything. That's fun. That's, that's great. Yeah. Our friends from Sea Wave, I think we mentioned this, with, with our, our founder friend from Sea Wave is a Buddhist monk. And uh, uh -huh. all, of, all of my years of judo were done at the Denver Buddhist temple as well. Oh, uh-huh. Yeah. Well, that's how I met Chad. His parents went to the same temple that I did. So I, I met his parents, and then he, because that's how he's, he's younger than me. So that's a good thing. Well, it's it's coming together now. I know why I had such a good, positive feeling just talking with you. I just I commented this on one of our Facebook posts, but I I told somebody, man, when I'm talking to Ron, it makes me feel like I just won the lottery. He just makes me feel like, oh. like I'm just oh, mercy. It makes lifts my day. So I'm glad we were able oh. to get yeah. you on and kind of share kind of more about you and what you do. And I just love your whole approach of just kind of focusing on your strengths and you know, just really putting a lot of your effort into something that you are passionate about and you want to continually improve. I just, I really appreciate all of that and just thought it would be really cool to highlight you on here. And then our stuff just sounded so good together too. It just, oh, boy. We, that's a, that, we were rocking. Wasn't that nice? That was, <laughs> was, yeah, that room that was, was so much fun. Pleasure. I mean, just to yeah. keep that, I, mean, I have to, yeah, I, I really enjoyed uh -huh. hanging out with you there. Um, so, oh yeah, and, and I think your next product will have to be called the Dolce. I think the next product. <laughs> well, that's the hardest thing to come up with names for products. You know, I think what y'all kind of string together some letters and then sometimes do that. And it, it, it's a, that's the hardest part sometimes. Yeah, oh, yeah. That yeah. Is the owner's manuals. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm behind on that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I've been trying to build a build an owner's manual for uh, our new power amp this last week, and that's uh, yeah, it's not as 
I mean, I'm really good at writing essays and blogs and things, but formatting and getting it all just lined up properly, that's been the challenge. But, but you know, and, 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 and Jake, you're, thank you for, you're so generous with your compliments. And, and, and I much appreciate that. And I think um, this is such an opportunity for us to show uh, good camaraderie within the industry. And there, there's a lot, and people that maybe see forums where uh, it's, a, it's a battleground, they may not appreciate that that is not representative of, of how the principles, how, how we behave. Yeah. We behave politely and we go to parties together and um, we're, you know, we're, we're not at each other's throat. Not at all like some of the forums are. Sure, right. sure. Yeah, and, and as I commented in our own conversations before, the way I view it is that, you know, anyone that's gotten to the level of making a product and being able to market it and put it out there, I mean, it's it's probably a good product and, you know, deserves the benefit of the doubt and most people's ears are capable of deciding whether they like it or not and you know I just that's I get makes it easy for me to give compliments to people because you know we we build good gear and if people's ears like it then great you know so it, it's they're yours they belong to you yeah yeah they're yours yeah and I just I it, and how again got, kind of going back to commenting on how you appreciate those big automated cnc machine operations, I just come to appreciate hearing about how other engineers and other companies do their thing. And it was, yeah, you just being an awesome person was a bonus. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. I, 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 I try to be a decent sort of person. I mean, I gotta live with me. <laughs> you know, I, don't, I don't live with some old grouch. Yeah, for sure. Well, I'm all, I'm all out of my brew. I, I, I it was a hey. thirsty, yeah. thirsty day for me, but, uh, I can't think of any other questions I've got today. We'll just have to get you and Chad on again sometime soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe we'll do a little tour of, of, of our places and, and such, you know, if there's no opportunity for that. And you have your wonderful uh, weekend vacation. I'm so happy for your getaway. Yeah, get to escape. Go to some hot springs. Colorado. There you go. Nice hot springs you, up here. Well, you couldn't, couldn't happen to a nicer man. So best have, have a good time. Thank you. Ariel, do you got any other questions for our buddy Ron while, while we got him? Not today. No. I'll let you go. All right. Well, well gentlemen, it was a pleasure. Thank you so much for inviting me. Yeah, yeah Ron. Thank you, Ron. I, I enjoyed hearing you and Ariel get to geek out a little bit. It's nice to get oh, some, some big, big minds in the same room together. Oh, I, I uh, now because now we know geeks, that's a good, that's a good job. Yeah, that's, that's a geek is a good job. So we're, we're it's a blessing to be an engineer. Yep. Indeed. All right, guys. Well, cheers. Thank you for joining us, Ron. Uh, cheers. Adi yep. Adios. Yep.